Heidi ho friends it is Tuesday January 9th we are going to start making dinner in the midst of the three rivers pantry challenge and it is a dreary day so I'm trying to do these videos like the day and then release it the next day so they're kind of more fresh and we're keeping up on track with what we're doing during the challenge and so today's Tuesday and there is a huge storm blowing through a majority of the east coast of the United States. It is about maybe mid 40s, late, oh, is that right? Mid 40s, late 40s, as far as the temperature Fahrenheit. And, uh, but so it's not snowing, but it's raining and we are supposed to get some pretty high winds. I keep looking out the window is what I'm doing. And uh, the rain is just now starting to pick up. And so it's kind of like a cold little dreary day. And it's so funny, I, I said this to my daughter this morning, she's seven, and I was like, you know, it's kind of a cold, dreary day. What do you think we should have for dinner? And I already knew what we were gonna have, <laughs> but I wanted to see if she was gonna jive with what I'm making. She's like, mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's her favorite meal. And I was like, oh, I should have known you were going to say that, number one. And number two, that also would have been a good kind of cold, dreary day meal. But nope, <laughs> we are going to have chili. Chili is, uh, I think, one of those dishes that you can just throw almost anything in. It's going to be delicious. It's warming. It's hearty. And it's easy to make. And so we're going to make chili here. I can move this down. I've got everything um, on the counter and we're going to do this in the instant pot. I do a lot in my instant pot because it's so easy and um, it kind of creates just a, a, a more an enjoyable process for me. So we're going to do that. I intend also to make some cornbread. I've got my cookbook out behind me. I like to use Jill Winger's green chili cornbread recipe from her old fashioned on purpose cookbook. However, I don't always add the green chilies because my kids don't necessarily like to have heat within their cornbread, but I'm most likely still gonna do that. We'll see if I have time. We're gonna start with the chili. Before we go to the chili, <laughs> there is something I need to address. Now y'all, when I'm filming here in the kitchen, like this is our home and there are many times it's a disaster. Y'all are gonna see piles of stuff uh, piles of whatever. We live here and uh, we have days where we're much more organized and on top of it and days where we're not. But you're also just going to see, you know, things in our home. <laughs> so last fall, I don't remember which video it was, but last fall there was a gentleman that commented about that. And then Yesterday, literally within the last 24 hours, um, a good friend of mine, her and her husband were, were good friends with them. She texted me and was like, what's that? And then I had someone on Instagram message me, uh, hi Claire, that I, I don't know, but she was, she was so sweet. She was so kind and she wrote it in a very sweet, kind way, but was like, you know, what's that? And so I'm <laughs> just going to put it out there. This is not what it looks like. It's a lobster. <laughs> it's a lobster, y'all. It's just a lobster. <laughs> but the hook is right here. There's no hook over here. It's right here. So this is how it has to hang. <laughs> Bad choice of word. Yeah. So yes, y'all have had all kinds of laughs over that, over the lobster. There's a fish. There's just a little like rosette up there, but that's my copper collection. So now, you know, I just need to put that out there. We all know what it is. We all know what it could resemble. Yes, it's funny. My husband and I have had quite the laughs over it uh, in the last few months, especially with other people noticing. But can we move on now? <laughs> let's try. All right, let's make some chili. So I've got my Instant Pot here, it's plugged in. I am gonna put it on the saute function. I've got one pound of ground beef. I'm just gonna throw that in. I 
and I'm opening meat. So who do you think heard that? I don't have any meat for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. But one of the things I love about chili, I'll just speak about chili right now. I was gonna say anything in the Instant Pot, but chili specifically, is that you can do this ahead of time, right? It's something that you can have in your crock pot or in your Instant Pot and going all day while you're at work and then you come home and dinner is ready. And, and that is that is something that should not be undervalued. <laughs> like It's actually pretty amazing. Um, and so obviously I'm kind of browning the meat and you know, kind of getting it going but maybe you don't have time in the morning to brown the meat. Oh, and by the way, I also cooked a cup, a dry cup of kidney beans in the Instant Pot this morning. After um, I got up, got down here, got the kids fed, I kind of got the kidney beans going first. And then I've just had them here sitting until we're ready to use them. But if you don't have time to do the beans or brown the beef in the morning, those are things that you can actually do the night before so in the morning, you're just throwing everything in. Maybe you're putting it in the crock pot. You can do the Instant Pot on the slow cooker setting because then the meat and the beans are done. You're just putting everything else in. I find that some days you just need your sanity saved with thinking and preparing ahead. Our beef is almost all browned. I'm just gonna season it with a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna add all of our other seasonings and there will be a myriad of them, but I'm gonna do that once everything else is in the Instant Pot with our chili. I'm gonna turn the Instant Pot off because all of the meat really is just about browned. And I'm gonna start chopping an onion I've got about Maybe a quarter of an onion left here. I'm not gonna go open another one yet. And we're gonna start just kind of chopping and throwing things in. I've got some peppers. These are peppers that we grew in the garden. And last August, I sliced them and vacuum sealed and froze them. So I'm just gonna chop these. These are bell peppers. I actually think these are um, a certain type of variety of bell called Edgevarsky. They are my favorite sweet pepper variety to grow. I've been growing them for I think three years now and I'm so excited to grow them again. So in here, we've got our beef, onion, garlic, the peppers. I'm gonna throw in my kidney beans. Again, it was one cup of dried kidney beans. Now, I'm actually gonna be adding in some sweet potatoes. I went back and forth. Did I wanna add in maybe a butternut squash or sweet potatoes, considering we just had squash two nights ago? I'm going to peel and chop these three small sweet potatoes and add them in also. Now, in my opinion, comes the fun stuff. We've got all of our solids, our vegetables, kind of in our chili. We're gonna add in our liquids and our herbs and our spices. So I have a quart of tomato juice. When I can our tomato sauce, I always strain out the, the juice. This is probably more of the acid. And people are gonna say, don't strain out the acid because that's what makes it safe. Eh, yes, but I actually pressure can my tomato sauce and I do add citric acid, but I don't steam or water bath can it, I pressure can it. And so I actually like to save the tomato juice separately for things like this. It still adds a lot of vitamins and minerals to soups and stews and chilies. Also have a can of tomato paste, a larger can of crushed tomatoes, should we need those. And then chili is one of the other times where I really like to just clean out the refrigerator. And so I found half of a quarter pint of peach butter from 2022. It's only been in the fridge for a couple of weeks maybe, but I'm gonna add the peach butter to our chili because it will add just a hint of natural sweetness.
At this point, I'm gonna put the slow cook setting on, and I have it on more. Uh, it is currently two o'clock. We'll be eating in about four-ish hours. So this way we've got about four hours kind of on a high crock pot slow cooker setting. Like I said, I've got a myriad of herbs and spices here. You're always, almost always gonna see me add salt, pepper, and these two. This is dehydrated onion granules. I don't use onion powder. And I don't, I don't really have a reason for that other than I love these. <laughs> I really just love these granules. I get these from Azure Standard. And then garlic powder. These two, even if I have fresh onion and garlic in the dish already, these are like my ubiquitous best friends in every meal. We just love how they flavor things. So we're gonna start with these two. And I almost always never use measuring spoons. It's just more fun to wing it. Okay, now for chili, we need cumin. This is cumin. If you have a pre-made kind of dry mix for chili, by all means, use that. I'm not a huge fan of those pre-made spice mixes with the exception of a couple of things I have from Redmond Real Salt. But when it comes to chili, um, occasionally tacos, I do have a Redmond Real Salt taco seasoning. But really when it comes to any kind of other pre-mixed items, I just prefer to do it myself. And you kind of really know what you're putting in your food that way and eliminate the need to having to buy any of those pre-made things. Smoked paprika. I don't even carry regular paprika in our kitchen anymore. It is smoked always for the win. Ground coriander seed. You know, there are people that love cilantro and there are people that hate it, that feel like it tastes like soap. Well, we love it. And ground coriander seed is so delicious, especially when you don't have fresh cilantro. Dried oregano. Now, these last three things are gonna be a little bit different, but if you have been watching for any length of time, you've seen me add these to things. This is, I think it's kale, kale powder. Um, I add this occasionally to smoothies, soups and stews and whatnot, casseroles, and it's just a really great way to get some more greens into my family. Okay, the next two, this is that leek powder. Remember I used this just the other night in our sausage stuffed winter squash. I love this and I will be making more of this again this summer. And you know what this is? <laughs> I bet some of you do. This is dried liver powder. We buy our beef by either the quarter or the half. We've been doing half the last three years now. Um, a half lasts us about a year and a half. So we've ordered two halves and I always get the liver. And this is dehydrated. I did not have my freeze dryer when I had this liver. This is the liver from not the half we got last fall, but the one we got like two years ago now. And so I actually sliced it really thin and dehydrated it in my Excalibur dehydrator at the highest heat setting I could as long as it took to get it bone dry and then I think I did it either in the Vitamix or in like a, a coffee grinder. <laughs> make sure you clean it out well before you do coffee. And then I powdered it. And so I make our own liver powder pills like capsules, but I also have, this is all that's left until I do the next liver that's in the freezer. I like to add this to chili and to casseroles and meatloaf for that extra nutritional content and value for us. So first, the leek powder. I can tell a little moisture is in here because you see how it's not uh, powdery coming out of the, the jar. And then the liver. Nobody ever knows. And last but not least, we'll add a little bit more Redmond Real Salt and freshly ground pepper. And 
And so over the next four hours, these flavors are going to come together so beautifully. Well, in typical fashion, um, I have about 10 minutes, <laughs> a little bit of a rush, but the chili has been going now for a couple of hours. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cornbread made. I had thought I was gonna do cornbread waffles. I did that two years ago in the challenge and you guys seem to like it and it was a hit with the family and I was gonna do that again today, but I have literally run out of time. So I am just going to cook the cornbread in my cast iron skillet in the oven. I've got the oven preheating to 400 degrees. This is the, the book the recipe is from. It's on page 175. It's a cup of all-purpose flour, a cup of cornmeal, tablespoon baking powder, three-fourths tablespoon Redmond Real Salt, one cup of milk. I am actually going to be using buttermilk. I've got buttermilk that really needs to be used. I'm going to do two large eggs from my water glass to egg stash and a fourth cup of butter, which is about a half a stick, some honey, three tablespoons of honey, and then one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese. So I've just got to get the cheese shredded at some point very fast. But we're going to start putting this together, getting it in the cast iron skillet and in the oven. The trick with cornbread is you never want to over mix it too much. So I put all of my liquids together and I put all of my, you know, flour and the baking powder together and now I'm mixing it together and then we're going to fold in the cheese. But I just want to mix it enough till it's just combined. And I put a couple of tablespoons or one tablespoon of butter in my cast iron skillet and I put the cast iron skillet in the oven. Now the oven's preheating, but that way the butter automatically melts in the pan. And now I'm gonna start sprinkling in my cheddar cheese. This of course is homemade cheddar. I love that we get to use the cheese that I so lovingly had put together last year. Now again, you can add green chilies, right? Her recipe says um, two four ounce cans of mild green chilies drained. I am omitting that. This is all wonderfully mixed and my oven's preheated, so let's go get this in the oven. Just gonna swirl that butter around. We don't want the cornbread sticking to anything. This is gonna go in for 25 minutes. Dinner is served. I'm on my way out the door, but when I come back, I'll get to eat. But I've got everything here for my family when my husband comes home with the kids. So let me show you what they're going to see, and hopefully they'll love it. I'm excited to eat it. So here's our chili. It's been going for about three hours now, but it looks and smells so good. Oh my goodness. It really does. So that's nice and hot. And this is gonna be new. So this is chickweed. Now I used chickweed in one of our dinner salads last week. We have all of this growing in the garden. 
unintentionally, I might add, I'm not intentionally growing chickweed. And it is a weed. It can be considered an obnoxious weed, but it is so full of vitamins and minerals. And it's actually a medicinal plant and it's really good. So uh, I've got the chickweed there and they can kind of, instead of cilantro, put it on their chili. We'll see. I don't know if they will, but I will. And then um, as always, our family loves Nancy's sour cream. So I've got sour cream here as well. And look at the gorgeous cornbread. This recipe comes out perfect every time. It is a winner. So. Bon Appetit, happy Tuesday. I can't wait to dig into this a little bit later. Stay healthy, stay well, I'll see you tomorrow.